<laughs> so 87, that's yeah. a lot of points in 87. A lot of points for Showtime. Okay, Paul Pierce, you, you don't see these Lakers getting out of the play-in, but anything impress you about them last night? Yeah, I was impressed that they was that they had the ability to put up 150, but yep. Indiana forces you to play that way. I feel like every time I watch them, the score is just the numbers. It's always going to be the over with they Indiana. They push they don't, it. They yeah. don't play any defense. Yeah. They get up and down the court. But, you know, I, I, lately I have been impressed with the Lakers. I mean, they won three in a row. And when I look at their up-and-coming up schedule, they go on the road for six games. And, and they can possibly win. They should win four of the next six on yep. the road. When I look at it, you got Milwaukee. Yeah, I don't I, know if they can I, win I, in I don't Milwaukee. think they can win that. Memphis, yeah. they should win. Indiana to be although, another dog Although fight. at Memphis is a back-to-back, -back, so will LeBron and AD I, I'm play? I'll okay. rest them versus Milwaukee. Okay. All right. I mean, oh, I'm, you would. You I just would give rest, it. Okay, I'll just give rest it up. them versus Milwaukee. Right. I need to go into a war and say, all right, we need to get Memphis. All right. Dog fight with Indiana. Yep. They should beat Brooklyn, Toronto, and Washington. They which, should. Which are tanking Agreed. at this point. Agreed. And so I like where they at. Winning three in a row, they should win the next four out of six. <laughs> And so that's what you need coming down the stretch. You need to gather momentum. Yep. You need to play with confidence and, and start getting into a rhythm. I like what AD has been doing. He's been consistent lately. You know what LeBron's going to be. But the most important thing is that they're getting the other players involved. You're allowing Spencer Dinwiddie to go out here and shine. Austin Reeves, and if the Lakers are going to do anything in the playoffs, these guys got to have a rhythm. Yep. They got to have the ball. And if they continue to do that, they got a shot in, in a playoff, in a play-in. To, to make it to the playoffs. And so I, I So like you're revising your look yeah, at them? Yeah, I'm revising yeah. my look because yeah. I have to look at the schedule. All right. You know, and I look, it's, it's, it's very favorable to them. And I like what they, you got to get these wins. Now, if they come off this road trip and say go two and four, I'm not so confident in them. But as but a you got them stands, four and two losing at them. Milwaukee and at Indiana next Friday at night. Milwaukee, yeah. Okay. They'll lose those two. And they should win the rest. So that's that's a pretty good. So now you're looking at winning seven out of the next nine games down the stretch. And so I'm pretty bullish on the Lakers uh, at this point in the season, especially after last night. You know, uh, when I look at them last night, Paul, when I looked at them, better yet, I like the fact that Anthony Davis can take advantage of a little smaller front. You know, not not as long and as big. He I does. Miles Turner is not tiny. I yeah, mean. but they but across the board though, they're not as big no. as some of the other teams that he has struggled against. When you look at him, so he was able to dominate. But the, the Spencer did what he taking over at the last minute for D'Angelo Russell and getting into the twenty point category, yeah. shooting the ball well. He had five assists. So you like everything that he was. I think bringing his to season high was eleven so far. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. but you bring yeah. everything. You see what he can bring to the table. Skip. I so agree. now you say to yourself, okay. Here's another guy who's getting the opportunity to showcase his skills. LeBron only shot the ball 19 times. So that's... that's well, Paul, only. That's, well, well, that's pointing yeah. to what you're saying. Yes, it is. He, 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 I say only 19. If he's into the mid-20s, right. you know, now you're taking opportunities away from everybody that's else. He had 10 assists. better when he's allowing these other guys to get opportunities. And he I mean, did have 10 assists. He had 10, 10 assists, assists which, See, which, is, which is key. It is. Key. You know, and then when you talk about just overall... Them not really ne necessarily pulling away. They was up by the 19 late in the game, but they didn't pull away. Like, they didn't just, they didn't pull away. They allowed Indy to still kind of hover around, but they closed in the end. And I think what, one of the problems that the Lakers have always had, in particular against, like, the Denver Nuggets or Golden State, when them last four or five minutes of game start to come around, Sacramento, they tend to di disappear on both ends of the floor. Now, speaking to... Speaking to Paul's question in the remaining part of the schedule, I'm certainly playing everybody against the Milwaukee Bucks. No. And the reason I'm playing against the Milwaukee Bucks is because we need to gauge ourselves against real competition. Okay, we need to figure yeah. it out. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, now we can rest them on a the back to back against Memphis and get them back again against Indianapolis, even though, Indianapolis, in Indy, in, yeah. even though you've beaten them and you've shown you can beat the Pacers. Last night, or whether in the in-game tournament, you, you you still are on the road now. So now yep. you bring them back, rest them against Memphis, which is a short-handed team. You take your top players and rest them. Now you get them back against Indiana. Then you say, okay, Brooklyn, Toronto, Washington. And now you start to look, okay, we can now look up because we come back home against the Cleveland Cavs, which is a pretty good team. Now they're rested enough. 
when you come home to take care of business against Cleveland. That's the way, if I was coaching them in the rotation, that's the way if I would do it. If you rest them versus Memphis, that's not going to be a gimme win. I understand that, but I'd rather, I'd rather pop Milwaukee. That's going to be a schedule loss. And I would rather, traveling, I'd rather pop, before. but I'd rather pop Milwaukee and pop Indy. Memphis is, they're, they're not going anywhere, so you might as well just let them rest. By the way, the Thunder played all their guys last night at Milwaukee and got annihilated oh, in the third quarter. They got an, it was close at halftime, and that's. But wouldn't you rather? Wouldn't Thunder. you want to gauge yourself? At this, in this stage, situation? Right at this stage, I'm like, we, we're playing playoff position and help. So you we, worried we, about the playoffs? We're not even worried about, about, about Milwaukee right now because we we don't have to see them in the playoffs unless we get to the finals, and, and, and they're there. So we don't need we don't need them problems right now. Well, you're not gonna Let, see you're not gonna see LeBron, any of these teams. I'll, I'll sit LeBron at least versus Milwaukee. Play AD. Mm. Let him match up against the Greek Freak. Okay, I, I'll we'll do play, that. Oh, okay, we'll react. play AD then. But I know we have to get Memphis the next mm. night, which is a back to back, and I don't want Bron playing back to back nights this late in the season. No, we have to get yeah. that game right there. That's so on the you, calendar. So, I'm like, so would you rest? A, a LeBron against Milwaukee yep. and AD against Memphis. I can do that. And bring them both I, back against the back, Both back versus Indy. And then we can rest them again in Toronto, because Toronto not looking like they trying to win at this stage in the, in the season anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's ways that you could kind of manage them down the stretch with this long road trip. But even, even, even the next five after that is going, Cleveland going to be hell. Minnesota, we just saw what they did to Golden State late in the game. Mm -hmm. It was tough, but we know what they could do. Then you got Golden State. All three of those games at home, then you go to Memphis, and then you end with New Orleans. And who knows, at, except uh, April 14th, where the play-in opportunities are going to be. They yeah. might be in the 10th, the 9th. Who knows, with Houston hanging around and Golden right. State may be out of there at some point, Skip. Yeah. All right. What impressed me by far the most last night was <laughs> Anthony Davis mm -hmm. did show way up. Way up. Because this is monster stuff. When he makes 15 of 21 shots and he has 16 rebounds and scores 36 points, th that, that's the kind of production that can take you far into the playoffs. If, if you can get that on a nightly basis from that guy, nobody else really has that except Joker and you, whoever, you know. Giannis. The healthy NBA, Giannis. 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 Yeah, those two. But listen. Miles Turner can block shots. He mm -hmm. he got ragdolled last night. He he got embarrassed. Yeah. He he could not begin to slow down or or bang or hang with Anthony Davis. And yet Anthony Davis was the first to speak up and speak out after the game. And I loved him for this. He said, We allowed them to score 145 points. It was terrible defensively. We can't do that. So the the point is. It was a classic are we there yet game again for the Lakers because they they flex and they show you their firepower even without D'Lo and they have not won a game all year without D'Lo. They're 0-5 without D'Lo and they finally won a game without him because to your point, Key, Dinwiddie stepped up, but he's he, he's capable. He's done this at Dallas and he did this at Brooklyn. You could see he and he's not an all-star, but he's a mm. he's a He's a decent NBA player when called upon, and he's an L.A. area kid. He, he's loving this. This is a, a big stage for him, and he showed up and showed way out last night when called upon, and that was key for, for the future of this team, the near future. So the point is that they play three quarters of decent defense against a team that just pushes it like crazy. They're the number one offensive team in the league because they're going to shoot it the most and they're not going to play any defense. It's all offense and no defense. But the Lakers, we saw them in the, the in-season tournament championship game at Las Vegas. They, they held this team to 109 points because AD just said, you can't come in here. Mm -hmm. And all of them locked down. Halliburton had, didn't have a good game. He didn't have a good game last night until the bitter end, and he made two really late threes that got him up to 12 points. So they did a good job on him, but everybody else was scoring like crazy. And I, okay, so they're ranked 16th defensively. That, that's the problem. That, that's why they're still just sort of teetering along mm -hmm. in the ninth spot because they, they don't play much defense either. They play more than Indiana does, but they don't play much defense. And the thing that's scary, though, is when AD gets into early foul trouble. That was, that was you know, he had three fouls early last night. So I was like, yeah. 
what's going to happen. But he only picked up another one, and he was able to finish. But when he gets in an early foul trouble, Paul, mm -hmm. that could present a problem for us on, from a frontline standpoint. All right, but by the way, Rick Carlisle after the game was not happy about the free throw discrepancy because yeah. your I'm Lakers shot 43 free throws and did make 38 of them. I was say that. And the visitors shot 16, uh, yeah, 16 free throws and made nine of them. So yeah, LeBron made all his, didn't he? Yeah. Did but, he make all of them, Skip? Let me yeah. look. Let me see. Yeah, eight for eight, right there. Eight for eight. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just bringing that up to Skip. Okay. Skip says right, he's a right. terrible free right. throw right. shooter. He's a so. terrible free throw shooter. <laughs> he's 73 percent for his career. Is that good, Paul? I was I about to ask you, what was yours? I was, was 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 81, 80, 81. I'll take that over 73 any day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Keyshawn, what do I keep telling you about who the closer for this team has to be? It's your favorite player, Austin Reeves. What did he do last night? In the last 40 seconds, he made all six of his free throws. And they needed all six of them because Indiana will not quit. Rick Carlos says, I got a team with a big heart, and they do have heart. So if we could see Halliburton finally got going, if we could see the two threes he made, you can say he pulled him out of his you-know-what, but this is what he does occasionally. He shoots that funky set shot. So here's Halliburton, and it seems like the game's over, and LeBron kind of loses him, and kaboom. And then here we go again, and Austin Reeves Ooh. loses him, and it's that thing boom. Like a rainbow. Yeah. Man. Yeah, huh. these, these are <laughs> bombs. And yet, and still, I'm going to give LeBron big credit for this because they got one last shot at it with what time was left. Uh, it's, it's the final three points, 11 seconds left. They, they had a shot to cut it to one, and here it is to Halliburton, and LeBron did a nice job there. At least he closed him out a little bit and got a hand in his face. Yeah, those first two, six foot those nine. first two threes, he didn't even bother. He didn't bother. Like... But the thing about Halliburton, is <laughs> jumper kind of funky, but it go in, so you don't really respect it. No. So you kind of like, if he's shooting that deep, you're like, all right, go ahead. But he's shown that he can okay, make this but, shot. But you just called it a jumper. He does not jump to yeah, shoot I the mean, ball. He just, he just his feet are on the floor. It seems like yeah. he just slings but it up there. But if you know it's going in, a lot of the times, why I mean, he's you? been struggling too lately. So okay. you're not really like he had a good game his last game, but okay. like over the course of since All Star break, he kind of been struggling. And so you kind of hesitate when a guy is six feet off the three point line shooting from that deep. And I and I knew where LeBron was coming from. Like, oh, we'll take that. You know, he it's only us. so he with us. It's only one guy, two guys in the league that's consistently knocking that shot down, and that's Steph and Dame Lillard. So you kind of like, I'll kind of give it to him if he was one more step in. You know, but those shots from Halliburton, you kind of will take. But if he hits them, it's like hat off. Yeah. Well, he shoots rainbows, man. Yeah, I mean, and it's funky, too. I, yeah, I mean, I know funky. if I was guard, I'd be like, uh, go, uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Then when he hit him, he's like, I should have got there. Yeah. So, again, he hits those two late threes to get him all the way up to 12 points for the game. Right. So when he made them, he had six points exactly. for the game. So you and like, you're thinking, you're not... well, he's just out of it. You know, right. Yeah, see, because no right here, what I'm saying, Paul, see, he kind of, like, like, you said, hesitating in between. Yeah, I mean, he's struggling. So why wouldn't you want to give it to him, man? Yeah, right he's here, open, he never even... He's open pouring the game into these two. LeBron didn't even fight through right. the Right. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I get where he was coming okay. from with that. You playing the percentage. Now, and just for fun, I got to show my man Keyshawn one more oh, Austin God. Reeves play. Here we go. We, we got to see. It's not a LeBron play. It's an Austin Reeves play. All right, play. all right. Yeah, this is with a minute and 40 left. He gets beat by uh, the block. Neesmith, and he comes from behind him, and he snakes him and gets it. He gets him from behind. And it was, it was a pretty good play. play. So, so, so it was a pretty good play. He could have gave up right here. He could have just uh, gave up, but he didn't. For a guy who can be a defensive liability on occasion. No, he gave up. He, yeah. he, no, well, he, got, he played yeah. with high energy, he played, though, He played Skip. with effort. Yeah, you know? he played with effort and Not high energy. Not a great defender, but if you continue to play with effort, you yes, know. You that's all it so, takes. So he hustle just, man. He, he yeah. overachieves. He's Charlie Hustle. Man, right? ain't, ain't nothing okay. wrong with it. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing. Look, if you Charlie Hustle and you yeah. knock it down, you getting 25 points and you 13, uh, 6 or 13, and you uh, uh, 11 or 12 from the free throw line, and you doing everything you're supposed to do, you're going to keep getting a check. You know, another thing that stands out to me is he had eight assists. And he had so, eight assists. So you know what that means? LeBron is allowing him to make plays. He's allowing him to get the ball and, and create for others. And, and that's all I said from LeBron. You know, I, if he can allow the other guys to, to come in here and, and help him out and allow him to do playmaking abilities, him and Dinwiddie, I think it makes them a better team. But if he's, you know, kind of like his usage is up and he's always on the ball, yep. it, it just takes away with the capabilities of this team can be. Dinwiddie takes over for D. Russ. 
know, Russ is, you know, he's had a nice year. He's yeah. scoring a lot of points mm -hmm. and whatnot. Does this turn into a maybe he goes and comes off the bench and you start near with him? No. No, you don't do after one game, Key. It's one game. It's one game sample well, size against, against a team who can't, no, I understand. who can't guard me today. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Okay. <laughs> I just, I'm just asking the question. I don't know. I'm asking you because you would know better than no, me no, on how this basketball good thing, The good thing about Dinwiddie having a game like this is like, all right, he's trying to figure out who he is in this lineup. He said it before. He doesn't know. You know, it's hard playing. You know, when you're an adjustment, making it coming to a team that's late in the league, it gives him confidence now. So now he comes out, he has a great game. So now when he comes back to the bench, he knows, you know what he's capable of. Okay. In a playoff setting to where if D'Lo gets into foul trouble, you know you could boom, you know you put him in. Put him yeah. in, and now he's gaining some trust amongst his teammates. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So, Keyshawn. Yes, sir. That's interesting. Huh. How many free throws did LeBron shoot in the fourth quarter after you were raving about him? No, I don't know. How many did he none. shoot? None. He shot none. Yeah, you know I'm, why? I'm looking at it. The designated. I just said eight, eight, man. The designated free throw. Oh shooter. God! Here, Reeves, take the here. ball. LeBron's scared. He don't want to shoot in the fourth because quarter. Because that's what he's getting ready to Somebody's going to get fouled. Let's inbound the ball to Austin Reeves so he can get fouled and he'll go to the other end and go <laughs> swish, dude. swish, and we'll be this okay. Dude, uh, you'll say anything. No, I'm not saying anything. It happens every night. And you oh, say oh, doesn't you're not happen seeing every night. It's happening. The smartest thing to do since yeah. he shoots a high percentage from yeah. free throw. He does. He does. All right. So, Paul, so have you amended your position on this team? Are you ready to say they're going to make some kind of playoff run? Can you see them uh, getting out of a round of the playoffs? It depends. I think this playoffs is all going to be about matchups. You know, if they end up with Denver, no shot. If they have to see OKC, I think they may have a chance. I mean, you're talking about OKC, who's young. Uh, they just don't have no playoff experience. They don't. You know, they and haven't and played and any big The games. Lakers have handled them twice this so year. So whenever yeah, we yeah. run up against Denver, you're projecting we're going home. Oh, man. You might whenever be, we run up if, against if them. If they come out with this, when, they, when it's all said and done and you got to go to Denver, before game one, you can start making vacation plans. If it's okay, Denver. I just wanted to, but if I you see Oklahoma or even... Minnesota. Minnesota, I agree. I'm like, all right, that's a good matchup for the Lakers because these guys haven't played it on the big stage yet. They haven't played any meaningful playoff games yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. when you get out on a big stage to where now national televised game, y'all the only game on where LeBron and AD have been in the light. You know, this is this, you know, the lights get bright when you look up on that big stage and you, you sometimes they can't see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can see that happening to these youngsters. I just seen OKC get blown out in Milwaukee. Blown. Big game. Yeah. It's a measuring stick game at the end of the year, and you get blown out on, in Milwaukee, and that's you, not you a sign of a team that's a contender. Chet, Chet Holman got annihilated by Giannis. Yeah. I mean, really punished Absolutely. by him. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I can just see the Lakers, if they get the right seed and the right matchup in the first round, they can get out. All right. I wish they had Jared Vanderbilt. I wish they had Gabe Vincent. Christian Wood wouldn't hurt. But it sounds like even if they come back, they won't. Maybe Jared Vanderbilt could help some as a defensive Ooh. specialist. But the point is, to Keyshawn's point about Denver, yeah, they've lost eight straight times to Denver, but mm -hmm. six of the last seven times it went to the right. wire. Mm -hmm. So it's not like Sacramento, because Sacramento just owns the Lakers, and every game is a wipeout. Every game is a wipeout. <laughs> they, they just can't play with Sacramento. I don't know why, although I would suggest no, right. in a playoff game, yeah. in a playoff reason, game. For some reason, I don't know if it's Mike Brown and his defense maybe. understanding how to play them, but for some reason, what is it, Skip? We lost seven of the last eight? Seven of the last well, they eight. They struggle against quicker teams. Think about a but young. They don't have an answer for De'Aaron Fox yeah, at all. Yeah, when you got quick yeah. point guards who yeah. can consistently get into the lane, that's where the Lakers have trouble and find open shooters. Like me playing on an older team. We hated playing young teams. You know, we were good. We, we liked we playing veteran teams that didn't push the pace like they do, that didn't have quick guards that can dissect your, the middle of your defense mm -hmm. and find open shooters. Yeah. And so that's a terrible matchup when you have these quick guards who could come in there against the Laker guards and make plays for others. You don't, you don't want to play against that pace. But for Skip Pace and Bills, how hard is it to defend a left-hand shooter when you don't see left-hand shooters that often? I mean, it's like facing the left hand boxer when yeah. you watch it on TV. You just not, that's nothing they're not used to because you're always taught to send your guy to the left. Yeah. You know, you're always taught to send them on the pick and roll left, shade them left. When you got a lefty 
who's out there who just goes left and finishes, and he can go right. It's unorthodox yeah. to what we're what you're used to playing. That's All right, what I figured. Final thought about the Nuggets. The Lakers do match up great with the Nuggets because they don't have a young electric point guard. Exactly. But <laughs> they don't match up well with them in the last two minutes of all those games because Joker and Jamal just say, we got this. Mm -hmm. And they close better than the Lakers close in six of the last seven games. Yeah, I mean, Denver, they know they know who they are. They do. <laughs> they, they know they who do. they are. Yeah. It, it's like, Skip, it's like the Lakers versus Denver is like big brother versus little brother. You just let them shoot, and you think it's closer than what it really is, but they always find a way to win. And being close doesn't mean nothing as long as Denver knows that at the end, we know we can beat them, and we know what opportunities we can take advantage so of. So LeBron can. is little brother against Denver. Against Denver. That's their big brother. Mm. Or like Denver says, who's your daddy? Yeah, it was like, who's your daddy? Lakers, Lakers that's that's their motto. That's, Kobe and Paul. No, it was wasn't none of that. Brother, it wasn't, man. Man. We was never you little know? brothers. We, we were 13 points up in the fourth quarter. Uh, 2010 till we got whistled to death, two ah, free throws, 20 free throws. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't want to hear all that. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.